Hello, and welcome to A Word at Midweek Live for May 20th, 2020. I'm glad you joined us today, and I hope our brief reflection can give you some nourishment as you go about your week and uh, hit, hit on hump day uh, to, uh, to carry you through the rest of the week. Let's begin with a word of prayer. This is the prayer we call a colic um, for the sixth Sunday of Easter. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I, I just I find this particular prayer um, quite rich, that we love God who uh, is, gives us such good things that surpass our understanding. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's hard to get my mind or my cognitive understanding around God's good gifts. And that God pours those into us as a way that we are filled with love, love for God and love for one another. And that all of God's promises exceed all that we can desire. Think about that. To exceed, God's promises exceed, go beyond all that we desire. Well, this particular prayer has stayed with me this week as I launched into a new uh, Bible study uh, in the book of James. And uh, I want to read just the beginning of that and give some context to uh, who James is writing to and, and why. And then talk about perhaps how God exceeds all that we desire. This is the beginning of the, of the letter of James. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. This is James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And it didn't go any further than that. Whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Now, I don't know about you, but that passage is hard to get my mind around, hard for me to understand that in some ways God's word surpasses my understanding. My years in hospital chaplaincy, I can't tell you the number of times that people question their suffering. Why am I suffering? Why is God letting this happen? Thinking of that as that God was putting them into physical or mental or emotional suffering for a purpose. Now that's not my theology. I don't believe God causes us to suffer or that God tests us in that way. And perhaps you do, but, but it, it's a, it's to, to understand a God who loves us, God who loves us as a parent who only wants good for their children. So that's why I stop there. I, I, when I do Bible study, I just I kind of move with the passage and kind of stop and sit with things for a while. And I got to thinking about this, about counting our suffering as, as joy. 
how that it creates perseverance and maturity and lacking in nothing. Hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the context of this passage from James. James is writing to the early church. He's writing from Jerusalem and both the, the Jews and the early Christians had undergone so much suffering, so much persecution, that many of them fled. And that's what he's talking about, the dispersion. Those are out there. And those are people who are suffering uh, beyond our imagination. And he's, he's saying to them, and speaking in that situation, to say that, that all of this is for joy. Now, we have to be careful here that, again, that, that God is not inflicting this kind of suffering and counting that as joy or somehow happy that we are suffering. But what James is saying here is that he's, he's also saying to hold firm to your faith. That as we go through trials and meet challenges, that somehow we are transformed within them and from them and we emerge in a new way as a, as a, as a new person. It's kind of the, what resurrection is, isn't it? That there's a death, a death to self that we emerge and come forth from that in ways that we, we can't even imagine or as our prayer said today, that exceed what we desire. The word testing in Greek, and if you look at it in James here, I, I did some, some looking around about that term. And it's interesting about how that's used. It's used not as in a trial in the way that we would think of a trial or a test, that I'm testing you, but it's Put is in like in, a, in in proofing. If you think about uh, when you're baking, you have to proof your bread, and that comes from the fact of when you put it all in there, you have to you give that time for the dough to rise. It, it proves in some ways that the yeast is working. But I did some digging, and I found it interesting that silversmiths, when they refine or test silver. What they're doing is they're putting the silver into the center of this cauldron where the flame is the hottest. And what happens is that all of the impurities kind of rise up out of that. And the silversmith will clean away those impurities and put the, the, the silver back in. And they'll do this process over and over and over again until the impurities are gone. And one of the ways that a silversmith can tell that there are no more impurities or that the silver is refined is by looking down and seeing their image, their reflection in the silver. I wonder if when we face trials in our lives, or maybe the, the trial and, and challenge of this pandemic, is that rather than thinking that somehow God has inflicted this on us, to think about that as we go through this, that perhaps the impurities in our lives are being washed away. And if we think of that image of God as the silversmith, that a God can eventually look and see and look into our lives and see God's own reflection reflected back to God, that we are becoming more in the image of God that we were created to be. I find that when I sit with that just as a moment to become more the image of God that I was created to be. I can't get my mind around it. And I don't think we're supposed to. I think our hearts, though, my heart, feels full and, and growing. That 
all that I desire in my life, all that I desire for my life. The promises of God exceed anything I can even imagine. And so as you go through this week and face whatever challenges or setbacks or frustrations, if you will lean back into that to perhaps see that situation as an opportunity where you are being refined, where you can come in touch with your brokenness, your impurities, and to those can be cleared away and that you come from that, emerge from that in the hands of God and that God sees more of God's self in you, that you are becoming the image that God created you to be. Let's end our time with this prayer. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Amen. I wish you well, and thank you for joining me. Happy midweek.